is Amanda and welcome to Rainy Books with Amanda. Today I'm going to be reviewing um, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I think that's how you say the last name, but uh, we'll see. Let me know. <laughs> I picked up Jane Eyre because um, one, I've always heard about it, but I've never got to read it like in school or anything. And so I was going into Half Price Books one day and it was kind of one of those days where I just wanted to go in and see what kind of books I found and so they had this beautiful cover on display and so I just read just like the back and uh, just kind of skimmed through it because I know it's an older book and I don't really like reading too many older older books just because sometimes it can be hard to decipher what people what the author has written but when I skimmed through it didn't look that bad so I picked it up and here I am. So a little bit about our author. Uh, she was an English novelist and poet the, and the eldest of the three Bronte sisters who survived into adulthood and whose novels all became classics of English literature. She was in school in January of 1831 at the, and then at the age of 14. Then she left a year after to teach her sisters Emily and Anne at home and returning in 1835 as a governess. She undertook the role of governess um, of the Sidwick family in 1839, but left after a few months to return to Haworth, where the sisters opened a school but failed to attract pupils. So instead they turned to writing and they each first published in 1846 under um, different pseudonames. After her first volume, The Professor, uh, was rejected by publishers. Her second novel, Jane Eyre, was published in 1847. Charlotte was the last to die of all of her siblings. She became pregnant shortly after her marriage in June 1854, but sadly passed away on March 31st, 1855, almost certainly from her pregnancy complications. So that's a little bit about our author. So I'm just gonna read the back of our Jane Eyre book and then I'll get into my thoughts. So Orphan Jane Eyre has endured a life of austerity and hardship until she is appointed governess at Ornfield Hall by its remote and brooding master, Edward Rochester. When the two finally meet, they are drawn together and Jane's future appears to be secure, but Rochester harbors a dark secret that bars their path to happiness. So my thoughts on Jane Eyre, first off, technicality. It was easy to read, it was, wasn't really hard. There are differences in the way like the grammar is put, like there's commas in weird places, there's semicolons in, um, in awkward places, there's random periods here and there, but I'm sure it was just the way of the time. But it doesn't take away from the book, it's kind of easy still to read. So if you're worried about that, don't worry. It's it wasn't that hard to get over and I didn't find the awkward commas and everything to take away from the book. It was interesting and I didn't find it annoying either. It was just interesting to see and read and kind of uh, maybe kind of want to look into how like why they chose to put commas and semicolons in different places back then. So yeah, so there's that. The story itself is, I found it to be really intriguing throughout the whole book. It's a pretty big book but I was pretty much hooked the entire time to it. Um, our main character, Jane, she is an orphan and we kind of see her, we see her life from the time she's like about, I wanna say 10 years old to she's like 21, 22-ish. And she, she has like a really adventurous life. So you get kind of hooked into her life and author does a great job of showing her emotions and how she reacts to different people and different situations as she's going through time. So when she's a child, our author does a great job of having her act like a child would versus when she's um, 18 and adult, knows more about the world and what you should and shouldn't say out loud. So it's great when we can see our character grow when they are physically growing with life. So I think our author does a really great job of that because I feel like sometimes it can be hard to forget what child, what a child can think and say and act and react to different things. And so I think our author does a great job at writing Jane as a child and as, and as an adult. And then it's just um, great as a reader to see how everything changes. 
She does a great job of that. And then Jane herself, like she goes through so many different things in life, lots of tragedies and sadness. And so the reader can find themselves rooting for her to like get better and like find a different situation and really feel sympathy for her because a lot of people around her in her life are not that great to her until like she moves to Thornfield. But in the meantime, like she's being treated pretty poorly. I think the author does a great job of writing her in a way that makes us want to feel something for her and root for her throughout the book. And our other, and the side characters, I feel like our author also does a great job. She, our author does a, great, does a great job on this whole book. But <laughs> I think that um, all the side characters are written to help our character grow, whether they're a good person, a bad person, or just kind of there um, helping her to get to the next town over. Like everyone's there to help our main character. And that was really cool to um, read. And then also really cool is that our main character breaks the fourth wall at times. Um, and it's kind of a little bit random. It's like when she really wants you to really know what really happened. She's like, reader, this is what happened. And so um, I thought it was like, little like a little bit funny um, at times. It was usually nothing too serious that they would break the fourth wall and usually be like a comedic relief or um, trying to explain something a little bit further. But it, it was always came out a little bit sarcastic, but it was fun. Um, I like that they did it. Cause not a lot of stories really do that. Then I have read anyways recently. I thought that was kind of fun and maybe be a sign of its of the time that it was written, but who knows. But yeah, overall, like I had a lot of, like there's a lot of twists and turns in Jane Eyre. And so like when I found out like the big secret from Mr. Rochester, I was like, <gasps> and like I went to one of my coworkers and I had to like tell her everything. Cause I was just like, oh my gosh, she had read it before. So uh, I think Jane Eyre is really like a novella. Like I want to say like a soap opera. So if you're into soap opera type of shows or movies, like you'll definitely like, um, you'll definitely sit down and read all of Jane Eyre pretty quickly. But yeah, overall, I really enjoyed reading it. It was a really good read. It's a pretty long read. It's in this version, it is 573 pages. So it is pretty long read, um, but it is a, gr a good one. I definitely recommend it. It's a classic and I can see why it's a classic and I'm glad that I picked this up and read it. I think it's always good to see, to read some classic literature, just to see like how the times were back then, how people wrote back then, and there's some great stories. And so I'm definitely gonna be picking up more older books um, and older reads. I just need to find time. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I definitely recommend Jane Eyre if you're looking for something older and good and a classic. Yeah. If you've read Jane Eyre, let me know your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And until next time, happy reading.